Hi. So, a friend of mine recently asked me um, something that was actually a, a bit of an odd question, but uh, quite fun really, and um, he said, would it be possible to turn toilet paper into a battery? Uh, I don't know where he got this idea from, um, but I kind of smiled and thought, well, do you know, I, I don't really know. But I've been doing a lot of work recently with um, catalytic graphitization, and catalytic graphitization is where you use a metal salt um, to help you make graphite at a much lower temperature than you would otherwise normally need to do it. So normally they make graphite in the sort of range of sort of two, two and a half thousand to three thousand degrees, um, pretty much out of everybody's reach. But if you can bring that temperature down to sort of the six to nine hundred range, then a home kiln will do it, or a home furnace. And that's what catalytic graphitization will do. Now, you use a metal salt like um, nickel chloride, or uh, iron chloride, or uh, iron nitrate, and lots of these things will do it. In fact, just about any iron salt or nickel salt that's soluble in water will, will do it. Um, and so that's what I've been doing. Now, I've been doing quite a lot of nickel um, assisted catalytic graphitization, and I recently decided to give it a go with iron, just out of interest. Um, so what I've got here is a tub with iron chloride in it, and in there are some blocks of um, normal timber that I've been soaking for three days to make sure that the iron chloride soaked up into the timber. And I was just about to um, catalytic graphitize those, and it occurred to me that, hey, wood is basically cellulose, toilet paper is basically cellulose, well, let's give it a go and see if we can make a toilet paper battery. So I got myself a wad of toilet paper, and I've not done this before. Uh, normally I sort of go through these things quite a few times and, and make sure that I've got most of the wrinkles out before I actually do a video on them. But this one, uh, I've got nothing on it at all, which is um, kind of interesting, kind of exciting, and, and I don't really know if this is going to work or not. My plan is to carbonise this and then graphitise it uh, using the iron salt. I'll dip this in the iron salt and make sure it's soaked and then gently carbonise it. Um, what you do to gently carbonise it is raise the temperature to 800 degrees uh, at a rate of about 10 degrees a minute. So about an hour and a half, somewhere around about there, you get it up to 800 degrees. And then leave it for a period of time. I'll probably leave this for about two to three hours, something like that, and we'll see what happens. The reason I'm going to do that is because I'm actually going to do the wood. And uh, I'm chucking the paper in as a kind of, well, like I say, just, just as an experiment, just to see what happens. Now, the other thing about catalytic graphitization is you have to do it in an atmosphere, and normally they do it in a sort of a nitrogen atmosphere or an argon atmosphere, which again is really out of the range of everybody. So the method that I've sort of come up with uses a stainless steel canister because it'll take the heat, and a bit of this stuff, which is activated carbon. And I put a bed of the activated carbon down in the bottom there, then I put what it is that I want to graphitize in there, and then I surround it with a load of charcoal. So what I'm going to actually graphitize, like I say, is this timber here. So I pick the timber out, and I'm wearing gloves because it's ferric chloride. And ferric chloride is the stuff that they use to um, etch PCBs. So it's not nice stuff. So you do need to take a little bit of care with it. Now I've cleared up um, six different pieces. Uh, two centimeters, three centimeters, and one centimeter thickness. Because what I want to do is uh, turn those into battery electrodes. And, basically see how they go. And the only reason I'm doing the toilet paper is because why not as I'm doing this at the same time. So I'll just give those a few minutes to um, take all the excess off and then I can pop that in there. And meanwhile while that's doing that and I've got this spare solution, let's just dip that in. Obviously you don't want to compress it down too much, or, there we go, and just let the excess drip off. You compress it down too much, you'll never get it back out when it comes time to do the actual thing. So we'll just let some of that soak off. Okay, we've put a bit of carbon in there, and then we've put your blocks of wood in there. Because the blocks of wood are going to be the ones that I'm actually catalytically graphitizing at the moment. Okay, that's ready to go, and we'll bung our toilet paper. I'm really quite amused about this. Our toilet paper experiment in there as well, on the top. And then a load of this stuff, which is just ordinary charcoal, on the top of that there.
then as that heats up, it will form an inert carbon atmosphere that should help that whole thing to work. When you've heated it up, you want a lid on it, and the lid shouldn't be tight-fitting, because if it's tight-fitting, um, the formation of the gas will actually blow the lid off and blow everything around everywhere. And then you pop that in the kiln, and like I say, you raise the temperature, in this case, to 800 degrees over an hour and a half, keep it at 800 degrees for three hours, let it cool, and then take the contents out, and what you should have is some um, graphitized carbon. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so here it is out of the kiln and cooled down. So you just pick it off, take out the charcoal that you've put in there. carbon and we'll keep those and use those another time. And there's the result of it. So you can see there's quite a lot wrong with it. For instance these three centimetre ones they've obviously been bowing and that'll be because of the cut of the timber and there's a hell of a lot of shrinkage that's gone on there. Uh, they were pretty wet when they went in and um, obviously with this amount of shrinkage then you're going to have um, a problem with the heating time. I probably heated it too quickly. So instead of doing it over an hour and a half to get the temperature up there, what I probably needed to do was do it over like six hours or something like that. So it's heated up a bit quickly. <coughs> but there has been no reduction of material. And you can see, uh, just by looking at it, that the wood lines are still there. The grain is still there and quite clear. It's very silvery and graphitic. So it's really very nice, actually. And that will be porous. So if we take a bit more care over the actual heating ramp time, we should be able to maintain the structure of this a bit better. Uh, keeping it flat, that is. There's always going to be shrinkage, but um, that's actually a really interesting material. Here is the toilet paper that we gave a go. And we've got, again, a similar result. I mean, the stack of toilet paper has clearly glued itself together, so it's going to be impossible to get those apart. Uh, been a fair degree of warpage, and that's because I just stuck them in there and prodded them in a bit to get them in down. So in order to get a flat piece of this material, you'd have to do something like um, use a, a sheet of steel or something like that and uh, rest it out flat so that you don't get this kind of curling. But it's um, carbonized at least really, really well and it looks quite graphitic. So in order to test whether it's graphitic or not, let's have a look at the conductivity of it. So if I bang that down to the Ohm's reading, Put it a centimetre apart, more or less. I get about eight ohms there on that centimetre. So for an amorphous carbon, we've got a good conductivity. So how do you like not to be an amorphous carbon? Looking at this stuff, three point seven ohms across from end to end on the two centimetre thick stuff. 5.8 on the one centimetre. 3.8 on the three centimetre. So that's graphitized really well. Um, we could probably get that figure down even more because uh, the higher the temperature, then the more graphitization takes place. Now we put this at 800, so we put it at 1000 or 1200. 1200 is the maximum temperature for my kiln, incidentally. If we put it at 1200, we'll get uh, a better graphitization process going on. Now, 
They did have a lot of iron in here, obviously. Ah, yeah. And there you go. It's actually magnetic. Now it's magnetic because if you think about it, it was iron chloride, and the iron chloride has actually been reduced to nanoparticulate iron. So in that material is an awful lot of nanoparticulate iron. Yep, nice and magnetic. Snap a bit of this off. Same thing, beautifully magnetic. Actually, that's really quite good. So it's reduced the iron down to iron nanoparticles, which are actually embedded in the carbon matrix. Now, the way this thing goes is uh, it maintains a structure of whatever it's feeding off. So the timber structure has been maintained, but the carbon and the iron kind of eats through the carbon. So within those microtubes are mesotubes, tiny, tiny little tubes that the carbon is eaten through and graphitized as it's gone along. So it's actually a, a nanostructure as well. So we've got a, a mesoporous nanostructured um, material here that, as I say, what we need to do really is take a bit more care of the actual um, processing of it to keep it flat. But um, there is a block of uh, iron nanoparticle laced um, mesoporous carbon that we could use for a whole host of things, actually. Uh, batteries would be a good one, supercapacitors would be a good one, another good one. Now, it's not a waste of time with this, because obviously these aren't usable in themselves. Um, <coughs> but I could grind these down and extract the nanoparticles, or I could grind them down and um, hope that they turn into um, carbon nanotubes and see what the kind of conductivity would be of a thin film. And it's probably what I'm going to do with them next, is I'll stick them in the grinder uh, make a paste or an ink out of them and, and see what kind of results we get on that ink. But the actual graphitization process with the um, iron 3 chloride has worked really, really nicely uh, and I'm quite pleased with that actually. What I need to do is, is repeat it because as I said, this is um, really one of those things where I've just given it a go in front of camera because I was interested in this one. Normally I wouldn't do it this way, normally I'd have to work at it for quite a bit until we got some kind of good result and then show you the good result. But I thought you'd be interested in this one particularly, um, just because it was a question raised for other people who would want to know. Uh, it shows you a bit of the process that goes on behind all the stuff and um, it's a really interesting result. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.